Stop worrying. I got everything under control. Hey, Mick. Hmm? Freddy, Freddy, please. No, no extracurricular activities, please. Just studying the candidates like a good voter. And boy, you got to admit, that's quite a candidate. You're fickle, Freddy. That's what you are. Fickle? You're fickle. You're campaigning for Audrey, and you're looking at the other candidates. Yeah. Oh, well, back to work, man. Well, we've only got until next Wednesday. That's one week away. Yeah, but I'm not worried, Mick. Audrey's gonna win by a landslide. Oh, uh, well, it's only natural that you'd think that Audrey was gonna win, because naturally, well, Audrey's your girlfriend, but Pat here, uh, I think this is the girl that's gonna walk away with the entire thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All we gotta do is look at the record, you know. The record. <laughs> the record. What record? Well, let's face it, Mick. Audrey won the title last year. She's got the appearance, boy. You can't deny that. No, that's personality. Audrey just oozes with personality. And when it comes to efficiency, well, you just ask anybody in the accounting department how efficient Audrey Maxwell is. Well, Fred, let me show you just a little slogan here. It's going to warm the cockles of your heart. <laughs> right there. Tip the canoe and Pat Harding, too. What does that mean? Well, it was a little slogan of yesteryear that won a campaign long ago, and it's going to win this campaign, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Believe me when you stop and look at the... In, look at the figure and vote for... Oh, wait just a minute. Wait, let's stick to the issues. Let's keep this campaign on a high level. I'm just trying to drum up the rural vote, Mick. Rural vote. Yeah. Let's face it, this is going to be a tough campaign. Yes, and you is. know something? I think we ought to keep it on a high level, Mick. I think so, Let's too, Let's keep Fred. it a clean campaign. Will you promise me to do that? Everything on the up and up. That's right. Right? No mudslinging. No mudslinging, Fred. Fred. I'm with you there. Okay. And incidentally, Fred, best of luck to your candidate. Oh, thanks, Mick. May the best girl win. Best of luck to you, too. Good luck to you, Fred. Good luck, Mick. I... break and I'm just taking over for them. Uh, well, look, at, I was wondering, could you possibly Mickey. see your way... Mm -mm. Huh? Freddy just left here and I promised I'd vote for Audrey. Doesn't waste any time, does he? Mm -mm. Gee, Pat and Audrey, they sure have the looks, don't they? You bet they do. You know, I think, I think I'd even give up my judo diploma if I could look like them. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, sure, sure. Hold on. International Broadcasting Company, good morning. <laughs> Mr. Friendly, hold on just a second, please. There you are. Mick, listen, I could split my vote, you know, half for Pat, half for Audrey. No, no, I wouldn't let you do that. I want this election to be run on the up and up. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, how's your campaign coming, Bobo? <laughs> well, um, I, mean? I don't think I'll get as many votes as I got last year. How many did you get last year? Two. Two? You got two votes in the whole Miss IBC beauty contest? Yeah. I voted for myself twice. <laughs> 
Maybe you didn't campaign hard enough. Oh, listen, Mick, don't talk to me about campaigning. Yeah? You know, last summer, I campaigned so hard, so hard, they got elected Miss Santa Monica Pier. Yeah? Do you know where I finished in a contest? Where? Last, behind two seagulls. <laughs> and National Broadcasting Company, good morning. Miss Ewald, hold on just a second, please. Yeah, I ran up all the points in the weightlifting contest, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I blew them all in the bathing suit judging. Well, remember that, that looks aren't everything. They judge you on efficiency and, and, and personality. Yeah. Efficiency I got. Yeah. Personality. Sure. Looks, yeah. No, but no. Wait a minute. What you need is a, is a good campaign manager, Bobo. Well, where'd I get one of those? What, you get your boyfriend to do it for you in his spare time and then... You, you, you have got a boyfriend, haven't you? Harvey Wyatt. Harvey Wyatt? Yeah, at least that's what it says in my diary. <laughs> Harvey Wyatt, what do you know, the sound effects man here. I didn't know that you and he were going around together, Bobo. We're not. I, I, I beg your pardon? Well, you can't believe everything you read in my diary. <laughs> Harvey took me out once, tried to kiss me goodnight, and I slapped his face. Dislocated his jaw. <laughs> well, don't, don't you worry about it, though, Bobo. He's probably just a little bashful. Yeah. You know, I, I got to tell you this. It's on my mind. You know, most girls, they, you talk about this Herbie Wyatt being in your diary and, and running for the Miss Santa Monica Pier and losing and everything. This would break most girls' hearts. But it doesn't bother you at all, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, happy-go-lucky Bobo. That's me. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Second. International Broadcasting Company, good morning. All right, just a second, please. Hold on, just a minute. <laughs> It's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to, to explain to you, that's all. Nikki, you've been talking for the last ten minutes, and I still don't know what you're getting at. Well, Pat, this IBC beauty contest is very important to a girl, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's important to some girls. What do you think Bobo's chances are? Bobo? Yeah. Well, I haven't thought about it one way or another. She's got the personality. Oh. She's efficient. Sure, but I, I, I'm talking about her looks. I mean, how she looks. Bobo can be very attractive when she wants to be. Yeah, but she concentrates too much on her judo lessons. Well, what's wrong with a girl learning <laughs> judo? As far as I'm concerned, Bobo may not be the most glamorous girl in this network, but she has more personality in her little finger than, than all the other girls have put together. Do you, do you really think so, Pat? I know so. It's a funny thing, I was talking to her just this morning and and I, I found out something I never knew before. Herbie Wyatt has the first page in her diary. Yeah. And he doesn't even know it. You're wonderful, Mickey. Oh. Wait a minute, Who, who's talking about me, I Pat? am. You go right ahead and work on Bobo's campaign and I'll help. Oh, wait a minute, what gave you the idea that I was campaigning for Bobo? Oh, I don't know. Women's intuition, I suppose. Wait a minute, you're going too fast. <laughs> Hold it. Just a moment, please. Just a moment. Mickey, uh, let's face it, I'm a lost cause. Why, why don't you forget about glamorizing me, huh? I refuse to surrender. Mickey? Yes? Will you tell me something? What? Why are you doing all this for me? Well, let's call it a challenge. I do so like challenges. I'm sort of a... Pygmalion. Pygmalion? Listen, who called you that, Mick? Tell me the guy's name and I'll slug him. No, no, wait a minute. Look, Bobo, that's not... That's another thing, too. Bobo. See, Bobo, the name is not too... too charming. I never had any complaints around Muscle Beach. Never mind about Muscle Beach. Now, tell me, what is your, your real name? Your first name? Your real first name? You really want to know? Yes, tell me, please. Your Mickey, first... if you laugh, I'll knock your block I'm, off. I'm not gonna laugh. Now, what is your first name? Anastasia. Bobo, let's continue dancing. Glamorously. Bobo, how can you?
can you well, do it? Well, Jim, I nearly made it. Isn't it amazing the progress this young lady's made in only three short days? Uh, it's all right. Mm -hmm. Well worth giving up my lunch hour for. Hey, when do I get something to eat? As soon as we're through, you may eat. Well, do you mind if I get a drink of water, Mr. Pygmalion? No, it's quite all right, my dear. You go right ahead. Okay. Mm. Be back shortly, though, won't you? Hey, transformation is amazing. What's with this Pygmalion stuff? Pygmalion's a very famous story. It's where this fellow Pygmalion took this statue called Galatea and changed it into a beautiful, gorgeous woman. Oh, mm. science fiction, huh? <laughs> ah, Galatea. I don't know, Mick. I think you would have been better off starting with a statue. <laughs> ah, Galatea girl. Galatea. Yes, yes, that's, that's very good, Bobo. Now, look, we only have 15 minutes left of our lunch hour, and I want you to now try what we've been rehearsing. You mean, I, I got to do a solo run on the stage? That is correct, but I want you to do it gracefully, just gracefully, like a feather, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, go, go, wait a minute, you're, you're galloping, Bobo. Oh. Now, Bobo, please, gracefully now, gracefully. <laughs> Now, now get ready. Get ready, my dear. Watch this, Freddy. And... your corner, please. I'm sorry, I lost my head. Yeah. Now, 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 look. Herbie, you may kiss my hand. Oh, well, thank you. Now, wait, wait just a minute, please, Bobo. Remember, Herbie came in to watch you walk gracefully down the stairs. Didn't you? That's what you came in to see, Herbie? Yeah, because she is very graceful. Yes, sure. Never mind. Okay, you try it. okay, just watch me, boy. Just watch now, me. Watch her, Herb. <laughs> now, watch her, Herbie. Now, watch her. Gracefully, please. look good? Hank makes the best malts in town, huh? Hmm? Say, makes the best... What's the matter with you? What are you looking at me like that for? Got something on my face or something? Freddie, you're right. See, I told you. She is looking at him like a sick calf. Gee, I wish they'd speak louder so we could hear what they're saying, huh? Bobo and Mickey? I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Hey, do you think we ought to tell Pat? I think it's too late. But isn't it beautiful, Freddie? A real love story. Like Peleus and Melisande, Eloise and Avalade, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. 
Fibber McGee and Molly, Warren Park, Kevin. These are people. Pygmalion and Galatea. Isn't love great? I don't know whether I like to know you or not. You know, ever since I got to know you better, Mickey, my whole life has changed. I don't even think about my judo lessons anymore. You don't? Oh, that, that's good. Then, then perhaps you and that fellow Herbie Wyatt, you can see eye to eye more romantically now. Herbie? Who's he? Herbie Wyatt, the fellow that you wrote about in your diary. Oh, well, I tore all those pages out. <laughs> I'm starting a new diary. All about me and Pygmalion. <laughs> Wait just a minute. Now, Bobo. Bobo, there's a slight misunderstanding here, you see. I'm just sort of like a, a you might call me a coach, you know, and you're like the star halfback. And Bobo we... Mulligan. Doesn't that sound great? What? Yeah, no, look, you see, I'm spoken for already. Pat would never... Oh, Pat will understand. I don't know how she could understand. I don't even understand myself. Why do you think of eloping? <laughs> now, you wouldn't have to worry, Mick, because I only live in a one-story house, you see, and you wouldn't even have to bother with a lot of... Oh, maybe I just feel like on Sundays. You know, I'm all But just a few days ago, you said Operation Bobo was going along so successfully. That's the trouble. It was going along too successfully. Compared to me, Pygmalion was a piker. Pygmalion? Maybe I'm more like Frankenstein. You haven't heard Bobo's feelings. Heard her feelings? <laughs> no. Pa, listen, how would you like to have Bobo Barton as your daughter-in-law? Daughter-in-law? Oh, son, you can't be serious. Of course I'm not serious, but she is. Ever since the day I started to reconstruct her personality, she's been infatuated with me. Infatuated with you? She even wanted to elope with me. Elope? Michael, are you sure this isn't all your imagination? I wished it was, Pop. Oh, I hate to bring you folks into my troubles. Well, oh, maybe I can dream my way out of it. Good night, son. Good night, Mom. <laughs> night, Pop. You know, son, I was just thinking. Whenever we have troubles, we, we seem to think they're ours exclusively. They never happen to anybody else. Huh. Bobo Barton never happened to anybody else, that I'm sure of. Well, maybe not Bobo Barton, but in my case, it was uh, Tilly McGraw. Tilly McGraw? <laughs> and Tilly was only one of many. Gosh, did Mom know about this? Well, sure she knew about it, but what could she do? I tried to stem the tide, but... After all, I was considered quite a handsome young man and quite a catch for any enterprising young lady. Gosh, you certainly had your problems, didn't you? And Bobo will get over her crush on you just as Tilly recovered from me. So don't lose any sleep about it. Yeah. Good night, son. Good night, Pop. And thanks. Tilly McGraw? <laughs> I have a secret for you. 
I'm not going to leave this room. Wild horses can't make me leave this room. Oh, that's not being Miss Victoria. <laughs> I don't care what you say, boy. Oh, doesn't make it go. <laughs> Just a moment. I have a little campaigning to do myself. Hi, Pat, Bobo. Well, I, I just voted. I voted a few hours ago. Well, now all we have to do is wait for the election returns. Mickey. Yes. I want to withdraw from the contest. You want to what? You're not serious. Yeah. I don't deserve to be Miss IBC. I mean, after the way I acted and everything. Oh, boy, I thought you were going to forget all about that. Well, I, I guess I was just a crazy mixed-up Galatea. Oh. oh, there was no harm done. <laughs> Except maybe you built up Mickey's ego a little bit. And, you know, Herbie came over the other night. Remember that goodbye note I left me? Yeah. Well, he came over and he bawled me out. Yeah. And I knew he was the only guy for me, but... I guess now I'll never talk to me again. Never talk to you, don't you worry. When you win the IBC Beauty Contest, he'll follow you around like a shadow. Oh, excuse me, Dewey. Don't forget Bobo here. Okay, Mick. Night. <laughs> excuse me. No electioneering within 50 feet of the polls, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members of the International Broadcast Incorporated, the final votes have been tabulated for the Miss IBC contest. And we have a winner, a young lady that I'm sure we all agree is very worthy and deserving of the coveted award. A young lady that's... The campaign is over. Just tell them who won. <laughs> The winner of the Miss IBC contest and also of this beautiful gold-plated brass trophy <laughs> donated by Mr. Brown, grand sportsman, <laughs> and a gentleman who understands the problems of his fellow employees, a man that... What are you doing, bucking for a raise? Come on. And now I'd like to present to you all Miss Audrey Maxwell. Miss Audrey Maxwell, a nice hand from the front. Audrey Maxwell, being last year's winner, you have the honor of presenting this year's winner with this beautiful trophy. Tell us, who is this year's winner, Audrey? <laughs> This, this line here, never mind about those. The winner of the title of Miss... Would you speak up just a little bit because they can't hear you. The, the winner of the title of Miss International Broadcasting Company is... Bobo Bart! <laughs>
the good folks that'll bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? <laughs> you know, you can't lose when you vote for them. Incidentally, I finally learned how to balance the book on top of my head. It's very simple. <laughs> good night, folks. <laughs>